Welcome everyone. Today, we're going to be going over an investor tool that I've built with Taylor, who's an agent out in San Antonio. Welcome Taylor to the channel. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, super excited to do this part two and finally get uh, some exposure to the tool that we've built together. So right now I'll hand it off to you just to maybe give an overview of what is it that you were initially looking for and maybe first start off with the spreadsheet that you previously built, and then we could go into how we were able to create the tool and what it does. Okay, sure. Yeah, so um, essentially what we wanted to do is, uh, we wanted a quick and easy way to analyze all of the properties that are on the MLS here in San Antonio, because we've known from past experiences that we can pick up great deals on market. A lot of investors think that the only deals are off market deals, which is couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, if you have the right realtor, you can find some excellent deals on the market in the MLS. Um, main reason for it is honestly, a lot of realtors are brand spanking new and they don't know what they're doing and they just say, yeah, sure, let's list it at whatever price and it's completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but there's also just a number of realtors too that like they don't have an investor base. Um, so if they have like, I don't know, their aunt or somebody who has an old junker house, their aunt's going to call them up and say, hey, you're a realtor, you want to sell my property? And they're like, sure, but they don't have investors. They don't know yeah. how to go and you know put stuff off market to market to those people so where do they put it where they put all the rest of them even the good houses so they put it on market right. now the problem for us and, and investors is that there are hundreds of, of houses on the mls i think like in my my last poll from the san antonio mls it was about 1800 houses um now i know a lot of uh, realtors if you're smart enough or astute enough uh, what you can typically sometimes do is come up with a, a bunch of keywords and then you can search um, the descriptions that are written by the realtors for uh, a lot of these properties to try to match some of those keywords and then bring those back. And hopefully that helps, you know, isolate it down to a manageable level of, of houses to look at. But even then, you still have to go by hand and run the numbers for all of these things and try to still figure out which property works and which one doesn't. And that takes a significant amount of time to do by hand. Um, so what we decided, though, was that, you know, what if we just got rid of that description thing? Because even then, what you're relying on is a realtor out there to use the right words. And yeah. some do, some don't. Some might just take the worst house and write the best description for it they possibly can. Like, this is a beautiful house. It's got everything you might ever want. Call us today. And then <laughs> you go look at the pictures and it's like, yeah, it's got everything I want, like, except for a sink and a bathtub yeah. and a toilet and a <laughs> livable space. <laughs> but so you would miss that, you know? And those are actually great opportunities because when those deals pop up, like that's the stuff that every other realtor that's out there using these keywords is going to miss. Yeah. And so you get minimal exposure on those. And now you're like the only person seeing it and it's easy money. So what we decided was let's just take our entire MLS and see how we can somewhat automate the process of coming up with, um, uh, financial ratios and indicators for whether, and, and I mean, a lot of my investors have different needs. Like some of them are looking for rental properties. Some of them are looking for flips. So what we did was we talked to all of them and said, you know, what are the financial metrics you look at uh, in order to make investment decisions? And um, most of them, I already knew what they were, but some of them, I was like, you know, what about this? Like, have you ever thought about maybe looking at it like this? And they're like, you know, that's an interesting way. Let's see what happens. So Anyways, what we did is we got together, came up with all those financial metrics and uh, just built out a, an Excel spreadsheet on, on how uh, the math was to work behind them. And um, then it was a matter of really trying to get the, uh, the ARVs for a lot of these things um, and trying to figure out what like the rental values were for these things on a massive yeah. scale. And uh, that's that was really where we... we brought you in, I guess, to, to say the least, is to say like, hey, where can we possibly get all of this data um, to help us, you know, 
put the last piece of the puzzle together to figure out if these financial metrics are working for any of our clients. Right. And um, yeah, you you went through as you basically already knew where to get all this information. You, you just were like, okay, you can get it from here. You can get it like this. You can do this with it. So ultimately we, we partnered with you and decided to, to get this whole process as automated as possible. And now we've, you know, got it to where we just get our base spreadsheet that we, you know, extract out of the MLS, we drop it in the tool that you built and uh, it spits out the entire output, which all we then have to do is just filter by our clients' preferences to figure out which properties on the MLS meet their criteria. And then we just send it over to them and they say, hey, now I need you to put in like 30 offers, Taylor. And I'm like, 30? You need 30 offers? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, ah, oh, there goes two days. Yeah. So, but then, you know, I've also got some separate tools now that help me automate, you know, all of my offers so I can knock them out really quick. But um, yeah, so, but that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, the, the tool that you built is phenomenal. Um, I, I how, how would you like to go about maybe showing it off a little? Yeah. Would you want to share maybe the input that you usually put in and the columns that come out afterwards? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let me, um, let me get that up. First of all, I just, just to say like so impressive, the Excel file that you had originally brought over of how you were analyzing deals and all the data that you were already bringing in, like from Zillow and some other outside sources. So really impressive on your Excel skills for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, like I said, I started off, you know, briefly in that corporate world doing analytics and stuff like yeah. that. And, uh, you know, especially with the stock market, you have this exact same type of uh, too much data problem. Right. And uh, whenever I was in college doing my finance degree, you know, like I, I would, I would look at all these stocks and I'm like, how do you isolate? What's the best stock? Like, I know how to do the, uh, you know, the, the math behind all of it to mm -hmm. figure it out, but how can I do it quickly and easily because time is money and it's speed to the lead who can get there the yeah. first. So that's where having a good, like fundamental knowledge of how to work with spreadsheets, how to do very in-depth formulas mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, I'm a big Excel fan. I know, I think you use uh, Google Sheets, which I'm not yeah. as familiar with, but I mean, it does basically the same thing. So as long as you have some fantastic knowledge and some sort of, uh, you know, like not necessarily programming language, but just in some kind of uh, formula you know, based, yeah, yeah, tool, then, you know, you, you should be off to the races. But that's something that I highly recommend to anybody to you know, really sit down and study Excel or, or Google Sheets or something. Mm -hmm. but you can learn the math, but you got to figure out how to do it on a massive scale in order to figure yeah. out those one or two little Easter eggs that you're going to want to try to find. Um, but, okay, so I have the, um, the extract from uh, our MLS up. Let me, do, should I share the screen with you or? Yeah, if you don't mind. Okay, let me see. This and then one share. Sure. And most people probably wouldn't even be as familiar if they're not an agent of what comes out from the MLS. So if you could also just give an overview of some of these fields too, that would help. Yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things too is that every MLS is a little bit different. Um, the, the particular board that I'm a member of, which is the San Antonio Board of Realtors, um, our MLS uh, is pretty nimble. It allows us to do a lot with it. Um, I was a member of a couple of other boards, which were a lot more complicated, their whole interface and everything. So I kind of got lucky with San Antonio being as uh, easy to use and user-friendly as it is. But nice. even to that extent, it's like, I still want to do data manipulation that I can't do with uh, the San Antonio board. So it's like uh, the MLS. So I need to pull it out of the MLS and then take it and do my own thing with it. And that's really where, you know, this whole yeah. thing came into the process. So essentially what I did was I just set up a view in our MLS system that will consistently export these fields. Um, these fields, uh, just to give you a real quick rundown. So the status is just the current status of the property, the MLS ID, days on market, cumulative days on market, the original price, the current price, the price per square foot, the sold list, which I actually only have that field in there because in the actual field, uh, the actual 
um, sheet that I use all this for, I, I have a formula in this particular column. Mm -hmm. And so I just needed something to create this column so that it would be blank. So that way, whenever I get my output back, I can just copy and paste it and uh, gotcha. I don't have to worry about it. Technically, there's other ways to do it, but that was just the easy way I came up with it. Um, now I actually don't even do that. I just copy and paste what comes out and just drop it into my current sheet. But um, anyways, the street number, the street name, the unit number, if it's a condo, the city, the zip code, subdivision name, the, the type of property, whether it's a one story, a, two, a, a single family, a condo, et cetera. Um, the foundation type, bedrooms, uh, bathrooms, half bathrooms, square footage, year built, size of the lot, occupancy, um, association transfer fees, that's for like HOAs, uh, mm -hmm. HOA fees, which is their monthly dues or how often they are due, uh, which is actually described in the next field, the payment frequency field. And then finally, the total taxes. Um, and uh, some of those things are really in there more to help filter the final results Mm -hmm. Um, because some, some investors, you know, they might, they might tell me like, Hey, one of the criteria that I look for is I don't really like houses that have pure and bean, for example. So for those investors at the end, I'll be able to filter those out or some investors are like, you know, we, we don't like houses older than 1950. So I can filter those out. Um, some of them only like certain zip codes, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have the zip code in there in order to filter them out. Obviously we need the address because we got to tell them where it's at. Um, the, the bedrooms and the bathrooms, like that's all great information. I think that kind of helps sometimes in being able to establish what the rental value might be. Okay. Um, but uh, as far as like the ARV, I typically only base ARVs off of square footage because uh, you know, in San Antonio, again, we do have all those investors that come in there and flip houses. And when they do that, sometimes they'll knock down a wall, sometimes they'll add a wall and uh, turn a three bedroom into a four bedroom or vice versa. Yeah. And so it's, it's like the bedroom bathrooms, they don't really make or break value as much as just the overall square footage. That makes so, sense. Um, yeah. And then, and then with, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, someone might also ask, um, so you have original price as well as the listing price. So what what would be like interesting when comparing those two fields to each sure, other? Sure, um, so that really is to find um, drastic changes in price. So like just real quick after looking at this, I look at this one. This one started their list price at 200, now they're down to 170. So I mean, mm -hmm. pretty large price drop there. And actually what I use this field for, um, this uh, this blank field, I actually use it to calculate the percent difference of the nice. uh, price. So you can kind of come up here and figure it out, like which who's really dropped their price a lot. Um, so here you see one, they've dropped their price 25%. Holy cow. So that tells me immediately either they very severely mispriced this property, which if that's the case, that tells me not only did they misprice the property, but maybe the realtor's not really all that uh, astute. You know, maybe yeah. that realtor just doesn't know what they're doing, which that's also an opportunity because then mm -hmm. not that you want to take advantage of them, but you can kind of, you know, figure out like, okay, if they don't really know their stuff, I mean, really their job is to work in their best interest of their yeah. client. My job is to work in my best interest of my client. I'm going to go to my client and be like, I don't know that their realtor really knows what they're talking about. I feel like Again, not to say I'm taking advantage of them, but I yeah. can maybe say there might be an opportunity that we can pick this property up for a pretty good deal. Uh, but then also, uh, depending on the days on market, so you could almost even kind of come up with another formula too, if you want. Now, I mean, this just came to my head, which I might try <laughs> to work on later, but try to come up with a formula to where I also add in like a multiplier by the days on market. Yeah and say, okay, this, this house has only been on the market for a number of days and they've already taken this much of a price cut, this might indicate that this person's getting desperate and might be so right. like, just needing to sell as soon as possible. Like maybe they've already moved and the house is vacant, which is also why I have this field over here, the occupancy field. Um, but so maybe they, they just need to get rid of it. They're, they're paying two mortgages now and they don't wanna keep footing that forever and they might be open to making a really good deal. So, um, it's almost yeah, creating like a motivated seller column. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
And so um, that's that's really kind of why I have the original price versus the list price there. Um, the HOA uh, fees and the taxes, those are used for um, other things that we end up doing in our final output mm -hmm. um, to try to uh, establish, you know, what the actual numbers or uh, estimated numbers uh, might actually end up being for the profitability of the investment or the ARV and things like that. Gotcha. So. So yeah. now transitioning over to, you have this file, initially getting some data was either not available or it was a tedious process. So how has the tool helped in terms of the columns that it now brings in that you can, helps you analyze ARV and some other attributes? Yeah, so this is kind of what we do with it at the end. Um, we, we, get, we send it through the program that you developed. Uh, and essentially that gives us a number of key fields. I don't know if I have an output file. Let me see if I have an output file queued up. Might take a minute to open, but yeah, sure. essentially the output file, um, it just, yeah, I don't think I have one that I can. It might be in the, if you go to what, when I sent you, uh, the link, and then if you go to output, there should be one in okay. there. Okay, yeah, there we go. I think I clicked on the wrong thing. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so um, essentially what the output file does is the output file goes and pulls all of these uh, properties and pulls up the estimates from them from various sources for what their uh, their ARVs are, which um, just for background information stands for uh, after uh, repair value. So um, after the house should be all fixed up, what do we think it would sell for if the property was in excellent shape? Um, and so there's a number of different uh, sources that you knew about for us to um, to tap into to give us what their estimates are for the, the, the values, those values. And so what the tool does is it essentially goes out and retrieves all those values from all of these sources and then uh, brings them back to us so that we can then plug them into our sheet, um, which then does all of the computations for every single property that we have. Um, and one of the other things that we also kind of started to do was uh, we essentially wanted to figure out what did the house sell for a long time ago uh, whenever the original owner bought it and um, how much has the market moved since then? Mm -hmm. And then applied that back to, um, to, to more or less come up with an estimate of what we think it should be worth today based off of that. And so the tool eventually kind of helps us do that as well. Um, so it's just another uh, version of an estimate. But um, essentially, we come up with all these estimates. And then finally, we land on like a median estimate or an average estimate for the property's values. From there, we go through a number of different calculations. Um, so we do like a percent of the ARV, because a lot of the investors look for like a certain percentage of the ARV is what they yeah. want to pick the property up for. Um, the, we also look at the rental values of each property and we say, you know, what is the average rent per square foot? You know, uh, what, uh, what's the amount of rent that we're needing to turn it over for uh, mm -hmm. in order for it to make a profit? Um, the rent to price ratio, I know a lot of investors look for that 1% rent to price ratio. Um, some of them look for other uh, metrics like a, uh, what's, the needed price for rent. So that's that's a pr proprietary formula that we can't really disclose, but it's a formula that essentially says like, given the rental value, this is the, the number that they, we need to pick it up for, for it to make sense. Right. Um, and then also we actually take in every single actual value we come up with. So the purchase price, the, uh, the title policy, the title fees, the HOA fees, survey, home warranty, financing fees, mortgage loans, down payment, everything. And uh, we use all that to compute the financials for the property to ultimately arrive at the uh, net operating income and the cap rate um, so that way we can pitch them to our investors and say, listen, this is a this is an eight cap. Um, and then we show them the numbers behind it. 
and uh, they 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 love it. They get excited. Yeah, um, absolutely so amazing get, spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, and then it just keeps going on. We we were able to compute the cash on cash return, the net income after tax, cash and cash return after tax. Because that's another thing. I think a lot of people, whenever they compute these numbers, they don't take into consideration the tax benefits of properties as well, like using the depreciation and stuff like that. So we also made sure to bring in that and to kind of factor in the tax. Now, obviously, sometimes these are going to be um, guesstimates in a sense, because everybody has different tax rates and and different situations Mm -hmm. apply. So like, while I can't say any of this is actually financial advice or legal advice or tax advice, whatever, um, I can at least give you more or less just a ballpark. I mean, take it, definitely run your own numbers and confirm for, you know, what it is, but this helps us at least isolate um, which ones on the surface look like they should work, right? Yeah. Um, And everybody has different mortgage uh, loans that they can get or different interest rates they're offered, um, different down payment requirements. So, I mean, everything is a little bit uh, subject to each individual investor's, um, you know, uh, own personal situation. Um, so, I mean, and we are able to customize all of our inputs per investor situation as well. Perfect. So, um, you know, if they, if they give us all the input numbers that we need, then we can plug them all in there and be like, based off of our, our numbers and our calculations, this is what it should be for you. Uh, again, don't hold our feet to the fire. Don't sue <laughs> us. We're just coming up with formulas and saying, this is what this says. You right. run your own numbers and confirm all that, but. Uh, this at least will help us guide you to uh, hopefully a house that does work for you um, instead of having to waste time and look at thousands of properties that don't. Yeah, um, this but- is tremendous. I mean, it's difficult for anyone, let alone even like investors who have the knowledge to be able to really pinpoint which properties to go after. So having an agent that has something like this in place is really just for me, it's like yeah. pretty mind blowing and that it's available. So I have two follow-up questions here. On the sure. one front, um, by having a tool that automatically pulls this data, say for a thousand properties at once, uh, what would you say is like the time savings there that if you were to have to search for that um, for each individual property? Um, I mean, it wouldn't be possible. Can I just say that? Yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, because what I mean by that is that you would, every deal by the time you would find it would be gone. Yeah. You wouldn't have the ability to find the deal and then have it still there. Every good deal that shows up on market is, it gets picked over pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Um, I've said it before, like the speed of the lead on these things is critical. Um, so that's really what allows us to, to leapfrog over everybody else is that we are able to quickly, um, hone in on what we, what, what we need to, what, what works. Definitely. Yeah. And then on the second end, um, I've seen a lot of spreadsheets to help investors, but they're never like at the scale. So did you use or like look into how people evaluate like commercial deals to give you ideas? Like how are you able to, like what kind of knowledge or resources did you bring in to construct this as a whole? Um, so a little bit uh, to an extent, I did use uh, some guidelines from commercial deals. Um, we, a lot of, uh, and I've said it before too, the uh, YouTube is a fine, fantastic resource for learning information. And uh, whenever I was first getting started in real estate, I, uh, I definitely watched, I don't know how many YouTube videos. And yeah. I, I would just, anytime anybody said something about real estate or math related to real estate or how to like look at properties, like I would pull up a spreadsheet on one computer and have the YouTube video on the other computer. And I would just try to model what they're doing. <laughs> And, uh, and a lot of, a lot of these YouTube videos, I did notice they would leave out like one one or two things. And I'm like, those one or two things you guys left out were like significant. Yeah. (laughs) And usually that was the taxes, um, or HOA stuff or just, Mm -hmm. you know, something small, but it does make a difference. Uh, HOA, not really not so much, but taxes usually, and the interest is the other one. And sometimes it would be, um, 
and again, I guess every state is a little different on the way they do taxes. Uh, Texas is a big uh, property tax state. So that's where they mm -hmm. really get us because uh, they don't charge a state tax. So, I mean, maybe whoever was filming those videos, property taxes wasn't as big of a deal in their particular location as much as it is here, but also just the title fees and stuff like that, mm -hmm. the closing costs. Like, you know, a lot of people, they didn't, they didn't accurately do it. They just kind of were like, oh yeah, it's like uh, one and a half percent. We'll just say is closing costs, which for the most part can be correct. But, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to be as accurate as I could with my numbers. So yeah. You know, that's that's really where uh, I got down and dirty and just started making stuff. And, um, you know, originally, I think when I came to you with this idea, you know, we didn't have nearly as many columns. I mean, now we have over, <laughs> I mean, the last column on this thing is column FU. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of different columns, but um, yeah, we, we're doing a lot to find just, you know, a few properties. It's it's really what it's all about. It's doing as much as you can, as quickly as you can, to find the one or two properties that make it all worth it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. it was, that was the idea. And I mean, like I said, when we came to you originally, the uh, the idea was not to have nearly this many columns. It was probably like maybe thirty columns. And the next thing we know, we're just like, oh wait, what about this? Oh wait, yeah. I miss it. Oh yeah, we need this. So yes, yeah, yeah. that we'd be able to be flexible and increase the scope if needed. But overall, yeah. Taylor, it's yeah, been a pleasure sure. thus far collaborating on this project, looking forward to collaborating more. And yeah, in general, this is really, really awesome stuff. And it really shows to your skill of being an investor-friendly agent. So for those who aren't aware, how could they reach out to you if they want to potentially purchase something in San Antonio as an investment? Yeah, so you can reach out to me at thehousehawk.com. Um, that's going to be our website where we service everybody, buyers, sellers, um, rentals, uh, investors, everybody. We, we take everybody's through there. All that it really is, that website, is it's just a, um, you give us your criteria of what you need to do, and we'll find it for you. Um, the other way you can reach me is going to be, uh, you can call me on my cell phone. Uh, I'll give out my cell phone number. Just please don't call me at midnight. Uh, but it's 210-899-HAWK. Easy to remember. 210-899-4295. Um, you can always email me, thehousehawk at gmail.com. Um, and that's that's really about it. I don't really do uh, social medias, though, surprisingly. So I, I try to, try to I get give on myself TikTok. a break. And, <laughs> yeah, I don't TikTok. I mean, maybe that's a, that's a 2022 thing. But uh, yeah. For now, it's just those three things, email through the website or call me on my cell. Perfect. So reach out to Taylor if you have any questions. And if you're looking for another client solution that's pretty similar and gathering data and really being able to make good investment decisions based on your area, then please reach out to me and my team at Analytics Ariel. And thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ariel. Awesome.